Who's ready for story time with me? Hi, I'm no one in particular. I'm no expert in stardom, but I made over 70 videos on them, so that makes me one on YouTube. So here's the super serious stardom intro 2023 in January. Stardom is a perfect blend of the best women's wrestling on the planet, along with theater. As the mantra of this channel, other than Mina is the muse, is that professional wrestlers are the best actors in the world, and stardom has some of the best in the world, with the added bonus of being gosh darn cute. Stardom's recent incarnation can be sourced to their soft reboot when Bushi Road purchased them. But do you really need to know all the histories of that? And Rossi Ogawa? He's just an immortal so No, that's not important. What's important is the now, 2023. Stardom functions with their wrestlers in units, and you have to be a part of a unit in order to have an identity. It's 100% high school anime. Each unit representing different values for stardom with their own team aesthetic, and a lot of the drama in stardom stems from members leaving, betraying, and being outright stolen from their units. Let's start with the babyface unit, Stars, run by the leader and the ace of the company, Mayu Iwatani. But once again, let's not start with her, but rather a wrestler who I constantly call the anime protagonist of stardom, if it was a TV show. Momokogo is the wrestler I relate to the most, a mid-30 year old film actress who didn't quite catch the break she was looking for and instead fell for a new love, professional wrestling. Momo joined Actress Girl Z and eventually stardom to become part of her hero Mayu Iwatani's unit and be by her side to learn from and despite not being well coordinated in the ring and just not being all that great, she is so endearing. Everything about her makes for a protagonist to root for. It's just something I can't get over. Her first season involved the other stars members trying to build that fire, but Hazuki got frustrated, then Mayu got frustrated, but Komomo is clearly trying and even getting better, and even earned Saki Kashima's sexy photo book. So now, we're definitely the same. We're gonna have to see how Kaguma treats her. If Kaguma can't accept her, Come on, we're gonna have a dark mid-season twist coming as anime music plays like Give me your head up, give me your head up. Kaguma is the proverbial best friend to the much cooler chick, a lover of bears, and bears, and bears, and like, she's a bear, but she's also a secret badass, and the high speed genius, who moves far quicker and far smoother than you would expect, and bear lore, if a bear sees something tall, they must leap. Kaguma loves jumping off of things like she's Shane McBear. Kaguma started her career with the likes of Azuki, but retired early on, only recently returning thanks to the push of Mayu Iwatani, and joined her unit as the only role I can personally ever see her do. And it's a role she thrives at. I love Kaguma. She's currently in a tag team called FWC with the ultra cool badass chick. I made this video on Hazuki that covers her emotional core, but simply put, Hazuki used to be part of the Misfit Gang, left stardom, came back, got her act together, and is now fighting for a better stardom through violence! Hazuki is a tough, scrappy fighter and a far, 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 far cuter John Moxley, and relies on combos and moves like she's king from Tekken, always aiming for that brain buster, the guaranteed win. I hope for a bigger year for Hazuki. She deserves Deserves it. I feel she's vastly improved in the ring and remains one of my absolute favorites and unsung heroes of the company. This is Hanan. She likes to Hanan around and do Hanan things like this Hanan. And sometimes she does weird Hanans like this Hanan. But Hanan sells very well. And in the short time I've actually watched her, she has improved. But she's far goofier than I see anyone comment on. I mean, her entrance theme, which is cool entrance theme, is all like. Oh, Hanan. I can't believe this Hanan bit Hanan this long. This funny, chill VTuber, the Ariana, loves this wrestler. They stream on Twitch and give them a follow, but I mean love this wrestler. It's even considered slander to hate on her. That's love, yo. And I'm like... Am I missing something about Saya Ida? Cause Ida is just the gorilla girl to me, but turns out, yeah, I am. In a world where these women do these silly competitions, swimsuits, modeling, general cuteness, and obvious intent to be cute, this is Saya Ida. I don't really have much more to say in the time given, but it's something I appreciate. Plus, she really built her body in the past year, like good job. She looks 
great. And Mayu Watani, the GOAT of women's wrestling, my favorite performer and wrestler of stardom, the best actress in wrestling, and number two wrestler currently painting Picasso's today. Mayu Iwatani is stardom, but she's also a silly little goose. Not exactly the brightest apple in the room, and sometimes comes up with matches where no one knows exactly what the hell she's talking about. That's what I love the most about her. Will Ospreay, Kenny Omega, Kazuchika Okada, none of them are this level of silly like Mayu. In the ring, no one moves like Mayu, and in between the ropes, Mayu is the best performer and completely untouchable. If you are new to stardom and get nothing else out of this video other than Mayu equals the best, good, I did my job, she is. Go watch her. In between wrestling moves, during submissions, and general downtime in the ring, this woman is Daniel Day Lewis. Next is Queen's Quest, another legacy unit of heroes with a Power Ranger color aesthetic. We have Hina, who I forgot last year and generally forgot existed all of last year. She is the sister of Hanan and Rina, three sisters in a not playing Little Witch Academia roles? Missed opportunity, Rossi. Miyu Amasaki may seem young and green, but don't let those deer in the headlights stare fool you. She's a secret sociopath, ready to eat ya, yo. We need to talk about Kevin, because Kevin Amasaki be a danger this year. Joshi Twitter dubbed Amasaki as Kevin, and I'm never gonna call her anything else. Kevin referred DDT, and her Kevin's gate. Next is Lady C, the colossal, cute, courageous, clumsy, certified educator of capitalism, caretaker of her comrades' clothes during combat, cheerleader, and quite comedic with her confusion, chilling her phone charger in the cooler, and armed with a collection of combat arts such as the choke slam, the cobra clutch, or the Claudio Cascanoli swing that causes her to clonk to the canvas and clobber her noggin to coarse correct her clockwork mind into command again. Lady C makes me chuckle. Azumi is a speedrunner, a perfect technical wrestler that can cut out all the fat from the match and leave you with just spectacle, the future best in the world, and hopefully opponent for Mercedes money. Azumi is the high speed bomb girl and the best version of herself currently with a limitless ceiling. She is so close to really being the best in the world, and I personally don't think any promotion, stardom included, is ready for her. If you get nothing else from this video too, it's that Azumi is one to watch and has been one to watch. You need to catch up with the Girl is just too fast. Last year, Sayaka Matani usurped the divine holy white bell from the loving hands of the divine angel of cuteness, and she's been deceiving everyone that she's actually worthy until she actually proved she was and tied for most defenses. As of this moment, she will face Momo to break it. Sayaka Matani is quite good, and all the praises her legion of fans say about her is true, but for me, she's just not there yet. She's still a little good. Goofy, still awkward, quite dramatic still, but at least it's all a part of the character. And that's what's honestly most important. Kamatani is a dramatic crying girl on the outside, but filled with stress and anxiety and insecurity on the inside. Someone who is just that passionate about defending the honor of the white belt that it's killing her. Her entire arc since winning the white belt has been about developing confidence, and after facing Kairi, she earned her confidence. The white belt is not the intercontinental title. It's its own belt with its own meaning, that of passion and emotion, but it's also cursed, for it caused numerous interesting events over the years, and Saya is handling it like Frodo and the One Ring. This little arc she's been quietly telling is very interesting, and I look forward to her post-white belt phase that will inevitably happen this year. Utami, the royal cool queen of Queen's Quest. The former Red Belt champion has been on an arc of showing her personality more. I admit, last year I was like, Utami whatever. But she won me over. Utami is very, very good in the ring, and seeing her personality shine more has made it all click. And it's not just Utami knocking no stuff, it's her teamwork with Kamatani and her variety of stylistic clashes in the five star. The woman knows what she's doing. I take everything. I said about her back. Hazuki is a cool chick, but Utami is a fucking cool chick. But after finally beating Shuri, where does she go from here? I know where we go, the cutest group in the world! 
the idol group flying in their rocket ship from the cosmos. Cosmic angels. Last year, they were four. This year, they are seven with two plus ones. Waka, the winless, has never won a single match, and it takes every single bit of drama from every single match she does because stardom is not just going to throw a win on a random show. Her story of winning her first match has the potential to be the most epic and beautiful and wholesome moment in wrestling history. Bigger than this. And I feel that stardom is not going to go through with that righteous route of her hard work winning and instead have her go down a darker route. Waka must win or tan is kicking her out of the angels. Devastated, Walker turned to Moaning Myrtle over here for lessons, and her friendship with Mina is still quite strong. The year of Walker's first win begins now. Where does it go is the interesting bit. Last year, the Angels beat Colors in a unit match and absorbed them, but Tam, the righteous and fair leader, let them be their own unit while still being associated with Cosmic Angels. We have Saki, the leader and someone that took me forever to get into, but it's quite simply a Chocobro version of this character I really like. A lot of fun with cool outfits. And Hikari Shimizu, who visited Chocobro, and that makes her awesome in my book. She has really awesome kicks. There are others, but whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> Next is Unagi Sayaka, the flying space freak, the absolute weirdo, like super duper weirdo, like super duper duper weirdo. God damn it, Unagi, I love her. She's super easy to understand, and that's why she's the assessor. Anyone new to stardom? Unagi is the best introduction one can hope for in regards to the tone and the amount of fun stardom can really be. I hope her journey takes her somewhere this year, as there is a lot of unknown in regards to what the hell Unagi is doing lately, and I'm curious to see it. The Fairy Queen, Nuts Boy, was in Donald Mondo last year and felt she was a pet in the group and wanted to be with someone who drove her to be better. It was her feud with Tam that elevated her skills and through their battles, a new new anime friendship was born. Poi sees herself in Tam and vice versa, so they formed a team of goddesses, Meltier, and started singing their own anime entrance. But Poi's dissension was the major event of last year, the catalyst for many stories, the proverbial shattering of the Elden Ring, and no better catalyst than the blooming of the Venus. The Venus, Mina Shirakawa! Last time, Mina Shirakawa beat the fuck out of her best friend Unagi and also didn't betray her, but actually she did. And after getting her teeth smashed in and living like Doom Patrol for a month, she suddenly wanted to speak English and hang out with English girls. Her entire journey has gone from a Gravura idol boob girl with a strong thirst to broken Mina Shirakawa as the bloody angel to becoming a better wrestler and focusing on the white belt, her subunit. Club Venus with her two plus ones, Zaya Brookside, the daughter of Robbie Brookside, with this cute shoulder shuffle. My best friend likes Zaya, and therefore the channel likes Zaya. And then this extra from the British remake of Pitch Perfect, Mariah May, who actually comes out to Sophie, so she instantly became way better, and then does this cool tombstone, so give her a chance. This year will be the year Mina chases after the white belt and pushing herself to a greater level. And perhaps, and this is just me, there's a certain cutest angel in the world in her future. The leader of cosmic angels, the stardom dream, the divine angel of cuteness. Just look at her, look how cute she is. Wow! The source of the contagious cuteness, the Tamu virus infecting the stardom roster. Tam Nakano is one of the three pillars, in my opinion, of stardom. She has won the white belt, the goddess belts, the artist belts, and now on a journey to win the red belt and needs it like Ludwig needs the Moonlight Great Sword. Oh, you got my side. Tam is an incredible performer, terrific in ring storyteller, always drives drives herself beyond her limits, and post-match, the woman could win some Tony Awards. If you ever want some more lore on Tam, just follow her Twitter. She writes it herself. I'm serious, she is so anime. You can imagine her stopping in the middle of the match and thinking, five years ago, Kyrie left and people were like, Tamu is the new Kyrie, and I always wanted to face her and then get five minutes.
Next, with the women of the world, Donna Del Mondo, formed by Julia into what was the most powerful unit until Knott's Poise Ascension broke the unit, even before Sherry left and took Mirai with her, leaving Donna Del Mondo at five. Micah is the strong girl with the most powerful Michinoku driver out here, great powerhouse, and always someone easily influenced into following a row, like the infamous bear costume, and now has forced Himeka to marry her and come out to only her music, Micah, the controlling waifu yo. The Jumbo Princess Himeka with the Wicked Lariat and the 90s hair salon nightclub music out there looking like Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Last year, she kissed Sherry and got everyone's attention. Now, my Hime looked to be the dominant tag team this year, even if she didn't want to be married. The legendary badass cinematic warrior of the cosmos, the Sith Lord of DDM, who betrayed Tam Nakano and the Angels because she hates dancing and loves to fight with her powerful fist of the frenzy, in ancient techniques taught by Egyptian lore masters, and an elbow with such explosive power, Oppenheimer be like, now she become death, destroyer of worlds. And now, after eating from the mighty carrot of Chen Yoda, Mai is now armed with the bull Nakano rolling leg drop with her calves of the crucible. My Sakurai skills earned her 9 points in the 5 star, and she was expected to win more, more? The toxic spider, Thekla, the Austrian mamacita here. She has such a presence in the ring, and always seems like she's flirting with every single opponent. Her in-ring style is unique, spider-like, and fits her persona of someone trapping you for the craziest night you've ever had. Like, wake up and be like, what the actual fuck? The number two of DDM, right under the Ice Queen, Julia. Everyone loves, loves, loves Julia. She started out as an outsider and worked her ass building a new unit from the ground up and becoming the most decorated unit in stardom. She beat her rival, Tam Nakano, for the white belt, lost it back, lost her hair, lost her strength and direction, got injured, lost her best friend, and then lost Poi and was left of my Sakurai. Then she started the five star with two losses and a block where Hazuki was undefeated for for such an insane run, forcing Julia to work her ass and fight hard to not only come back from behind, but win the five star, each with a different move. But first, she had to confront her past, Suzu, Suzuki, the siblings she abandoned, and then confront the present, Tam Nakano. The two wrestlers vying for the top pillar, seated by one Mayu Iwatani, the power of stardom itself. Then Julia faced her friend Shuri for the world of stardom, the red belt, and after killing herself in it, she won. But she didn't just win on her own merit, but she won with all of Donald Del Mondo's power and strength. It was very anime. Julia is on top of the world right now, and this year will be the year of Julia's reign. With the stardom world on her shoulders, Julia must now perform, prove that everyone does love, love, love Julia. Risa Sara, Suzu Suzuki, Kurumi Haragi, Mochi Natsumi, and Hakani Fujita, the deathmatch troupe of independent wrestlers led by the Death Queen herself. They are like indie filmmakers taking their act around the country. I love the concept. They are insane and currently the artist champions. Risa Sara has one of the best movesets right now with knees, stabbing with her knees. The Death Queen is more like a death mom to her protege, Suzu Suzuki. The 20 year old deathmatch warrior is so freaking good at her young age. My favorite breakout star of last year, who had the best theatric performance against Julia last year. She comes with a built in backstory and a built in motivation that wrestlers wrestling for 20 years would kill for. Suzu was abandoned by Julia when she left for stardom, and this would cause much pain for Suzu, who decided to numb said pain by being a violent deathmatch warrior under the tutelage of the Death Queen. She would return with an army to confront Julia for her past, and when she finally met her in battle, she not only reached her in equal skills, but nearly won the whole damn tournament on her first try. Suzu did not beat Julia, but did not lose either. Instead, they hugged. The thing they needed to do the most, hug. 
It legit made me cry, and it was one of the best moments in wrestling last year. The story is not done, and they meet again soon, but they have the type of story where they will quite possibly face each other forever. Suzu is something special. God's Eye is the group Shuri formed at the DDM, a group of warriors basically, the future of stardom champion. Ami Sorai did great in the 5 star and surprised me for skills, but I keep calling her Aime and Amy and God damn it, I did it again. Mirai, I mean Mirai, I mean Mirai, Mi Mirai has a cute smile, but she's also really solid in the ring. She hits all of her moves perfectly that she can be motion captured, but why does she always look exactly the same in cutting a promo? I like her though. Konami is part time now, and I'm not one to really watch 8 man tag, so I never really see her, but she was always a badass. Nanami has matching in ring gear. Tomoka and Naba would be my favorite new star I learned about last year if Suzu wasn't there. She is phenomenal already, a unique style all her own with the lessons of her master Shuri utilized. For those curious, watch Tomoka and Naba vs Suzu Suzuki from last year on New Japan World. Phenomenal. I'd show clips with no content with a JPW on here. I don't make the rules, the draconian corporate overlords do. Omega and Osprey paint an oil painting and they be like, you can only view it in the museum with these binoculars that you pay for. Now total off good sir. Watch her and her falcon punch! And Shuri, the former world of stardom champion and former winner of the 5 star, the intense Tekken fighter with powerful kicks, was a great champion last year. I don't always enjoy her matches but when they click, they really click. She's been a part of stardom for a long time now and has a lot to offer the younger talent. Her teamwork with Tomoka and Naba is my favorite incarnation of her. Now for the villain group, Oedo Tai. This is them. This is the evil group. Oh my god. They are very cute and very evil. The leader, Natsuko Tora, from the old Oedo Tai, led most of last year through the shadows, but after a run-in with old Oedo Tai member Sumiri Natsu, she has fully accepted this young group of hoodlums as her unit. Now, new Oedo Tai, doing whatever they want, beating whatever they want, and eating whatever they want. Starlight Kid, the little witch with a little bike going ching 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 and running over people like the mean little satyr she is. Starlight Kid is one of the best in stardom with one of the best presentations in the company. Despite her overall rise into the Black Tiger and despite her accomplishments with the high speed goddess and artist belts, she has yet to win the white or red belts and seems destined to win one in her future. And the best way to describe her character? Well, it's why this bit never died. Take it away, extra Emily. Ha ha ha, little bitch! The Black Peach, Momo Watanabe, has all the skills to be the top anime villain boss character, but is still defined by her epic white belt reign and has yet to live up to it. Instead, Momo has seemingly deluded herself into just being violent and killing people instead of driving herself to win again. The psychological effects of her loss at the 5 star against Shuri, along with the seduction of SOK, drove Momo into donning a widow tie, becoming the Black Peach and doing whatever she wants. Momo Watanabe is no longer bound by expectation. She is now free. And Momo Hot Yo, oh Rina, she's still having her little goth phase, so just excuse it for the day. This is the way the medication makes her. Waka never felt like she truly belonged anywhere and was suppressed about it, but is now in a widow tie and happy carrying a briefcase around and falling off the top rope going, Welp, aww, it's a Tim Burton story. Haruka Umasaki did a lot of choker pro and that drove her mad and now she wears old edge and Christian glasses calls herself karma and throws fireballs like Chris Jericho because Cause I'm a wizard! She's now the little bitch's partner because of course. Kaori Yoniyama is based as fuck. She was supposed to retire in 2011, but during the 10 bell salute went all Mark Henry. In recent stardom, she became Death Yamasan and then joined stars as their clown called Gokujin Death and then was stolen by Oedo Tai, where she accepted being Evo and is now Hukujin Death. She's my spirit animal, literally doesn't give a single damn, smoking, reading the newspaper, not caring at all about the possessor of the most powerful move in all of wrestling. And the day she hits it is the day we all find out what it does. And all of 
course. This little demon of evil cuteness. This purloiner of hearts and souls. This gorgeous eater of McDonald's and lover of the Spanish language and soon to be eater of El Chafito's Barritas. This tricksy little hobbit of a weighted tie. The master of a thousand pens, including the most powerful pen in all of wrestling. Kishi Kaisei. This expert in mobile rhythm games, this perfect little gem with the sexy photo book owned by this meerkat, this underrated performer who dies quite often, but this woman is so hilarious and comes with a built-in mechanic, kill her as much as you want, but she will always revive from the brink of death, this angel with the best towel and stardom with her certificate to care for dementia patients, this constant target of Rossi Agawa's wrath, this lady in white stunning the world into a standstill, and even more stands into a different standstill. My emblem. So you can with the former best theme song in all of wrestling. Let me Saki Kashima, first of her name. Last unit is Nanai Takahashi's Neo Stardom Army, apparently led by Alpha Female. Nanai basically goes, and yeah, she's competent, she's fine. I watch her on mute though. You is dope though. She is so awesome. I love watching her in the ring. Mm. Yuna Manase is the other Reaper. In fact, they're all Reapers. They all want to kill the immortal soul of one Rossi Ogawa to once again unlock destined death. But the true best member is Yuna Mizumori! Yunamon! The tropical lady, the pineapple fairy monster from Choco Pro Wrestling. Her personality booms and not Lady C Corp scene. Trained by Emi Sakura, Yuna is a fun and highly entertaining wrestler of both high speed and power styles who went on a whole arc in Choco Pro that's too large to explain now. I'm glad to see her getting more exposure and stardom, but she in the wrong group, yo. Tropical Angel. Angels, man. She knows the full routine. She's already a better cosmic angel than Waka. I mean, she sings her own theme, a cappella, damn it. Stardom features a lot of guest spots on their shows, typically on the New Blood events that are free on the Stardom official YouTube channel. We get the likes of Chieko Shikawa, the most wholesome wrestler with too much energy. So say hello, because the camera can't even catch her. Or Aoi, whose name I just learned how to say, and now I'm going like, Aoi, Aoi. She dope though. From Taka Michinoku's most evil promotion, just tap out, just like Tomoka and Naba. Taka be training killers, or Marika Kobashi. Marika Kobashi? Marika. My favorite wrestler who I've never seen wrestle, and that's gonna change very soon. Why is she my favorite wrestler I've never seen wrestle in an age where that's easily solved? Well, because look at her. Just look at her. I mean, say it, Elden Ring. Marika's tits. You must be hungry. I mean, sorry, I can't be making that joke. Marika's tits. Stop it, Elden Ring. And Marika will forever be Marika because... Marika's... Stop! And she's just so gorgeous, oh my god. And those... Marika's tits. You must be hungry. And just like AEW Dark, sometimes the new blood bleed over onto the main shows. It is a trio consisting of Ice Ribbon and Triple Six Joshis. Maika Ozaki is from Ice Ribbon and Act Red Z and has several years under her belt. She moves like a competent veteran and has a nice backbreaker. So she's Roderick Strong. Maya Yuki is a highly decorated wrestler from Ice Ribbon, a tall, gorgeous woman to bat. She's now a freelancer and has made her way to stardom, and Julia hates it. The former Ice Ribbon Joshis make for interesting backstories to continue through stardom. Maya has cool strikes and an awesome, sexy submission I've never seen before. She could be a player in stardom if signed full time because, word on the street, Maya be a top talent, yo. I don't watch Ice Ribbon, I can't tell you. So we we're gonna learn together. Speaking of someone I've heard about for a while, 
Wham! Wham is a tiny demon who spits ectoplasm at people. She started wrestling as a child when the demon overtook her, but only recently returned as the most calm demon I've ever seen. I am fascinated by Wham, by how tiny and fun she is. So much that she's my character in Elden Ring, Mountain Elden Beast here. New Blood will be introducing tactiles in yet another tournament, but this means we get to see Momoka Hanazono! Look how adorable she is! Oh my god! Momoka, we recently had a fun high-speed title match with Azumi, and that's the only barometer you need to measure her skills. She is literal joy and loves bubbles and bubbles and bubbles. Oh my god, that face, that face. And if you want to see how based Rossi is, look at Chan Yoda. Chan Yoda is... <laughs> Chan Yoda is a really strong muscle girl. Mm. But she was also a JV model doing... Well... Exactly what you think. And of course, those two facts got Rossi's attention, but sponsors be like, Ugh, like, no. But what did Rossi do? Fuck you, I don't need you. He found a new sponsor, and now, Chan Yoda is back to feed Rossi carrots. And this carrot causes the old man to nearly die in the most action he's probably had in centuries. Worth it. And lastly, those without units. May Saruga, Mama Ma May Saruga. I know she's not a part of stardom, but more appearances this year, please. Watch your match with Azumi. The fact that she chose Chocopro as her home promotion when I guarantee any promotion will take her and she would shine and be a top talent in the whole world already is fucking admirable. But she'll get her crown. The lone pirate sailing silent adventures across the world as the IWGP Women's Champion. The pirate queen, Kairi, is a wonderful performer in her own right. She proved to herself when she won the IWGP Women's title that she can still wrestle at the highest level, even if it's five minutes. She's now back in her rightful place at home with so many stories left for her to tackle. Now, we just need Io Shirai back and Threedom can reunite. And of course, a certain CEO of the wrestling world, Mercedes Monet. How many matches she has in an actual stardom ring will be the question, but one is enough to get her crew asking, why is it so hard to sign up for stardom world? And then me like... That's worth all the... the and that was the official super serious intro to Stardom Roster 2023. And every single bit of this is a lot more truer than it was last year. And super, super, super serious. Like super serious. And I love Stardom. I love Stardom. This is my favorite promotion in the world. Everything is a perfect balance of the highest quality women's wrestling. The highest quality acting and performances. The absolute attention to the little details in storytelling. Big payoffs to said stories. A complete willingness to include outside lore and wrestlers. Stardom is the number two wrestling promotion in Japan and the most successful promotion out of the pandemic. What Rossi built is incredible and I'm glad more and more people are watching the company and witnessing firsthand the incredible action, the wonderful clear cut characters, the emotional storylines, the terrific acting, and of course the icing on the cake. <laughs> Cute as heck. I look forward to more super super serious stories from this super super serious wrestling promotion like drawing straw to determine who faces for the IWGP title. Those kinds of super, super serious stuff like Kuguma and Tam Bear sliding down a floaty castle. That kind of super, super serious action like Mina eventually killing Tam. Yeah, you kill her, Mina. You kill her. And you bang her. Yeah, bang them all, Mina. Bang them all. I mean, wait. Wait. <laughs>